Good morning, namaste, sasrikal, islam alaikum, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, so today's practice, I'll tell you in confidence, my husband said I talk too much in my yoga classes. And he's probably right, I do talk a lot in my yoga classes. So I'm going to make a big effort not to talk so much today. <laughs> I'll probably fail like immediately, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> so let's come on to our mats, yogis. Have available what you need. Today, um, it will be really helpful to have something you can use as uh, a prop to raise the earth up towards you. So your blocks, a low footstool, a chair, perhaps be close to a bit of furniture that you can rest your hands on. It really helps to open us up if we have more space um, around us and so that we're not always trying to reach for the earth, we can bring the earth up towards us. Helps especially with balance or we're going to do pyramid um, today and there'll be a few poses that we're going to do today which will be helpful to have a prop. Coming into your Sukhasana, your easy, steady, stable seat of comfort. For our mudra, let's come into Prithvi mudra first. So thumb and ring finger. Prithvi means earth. So we're, again, working with the theme of foundation to transformation. So we'll be working with the element of earth and the element of fire, prithvi and agni. So we ground, root, find our foundation, and then from that we can drive forward and move into change and transformation. Closing your eyes or gazing down towards the earth. Softening that gaze by blurring your vision slightly. Becoming aware of your breath. And the breath that I invite you to connect with is Dirga Pranayam, three-part yogic breath. And as we inhale, we think about where the breath is traveling to. As we exhale, think about where the breath is traveling from. Inhaling, draw the breath right down to the belly. Allow the belly to expand here. Ribs flare open, chest rises. So your abdomen, your ribs, your lungs are full of breath. As you exhale, draw the navel back towards the spine. You notice lip, ribs curl in and chest lowers. Full empty breath. So fully emptying the lungs. Inhaling, drawing the breath right down to the root. And as it travels to the root, the belly expands, the ribs open, chest rises. As you exhale, draw the breath from the root, navel draws back to the spine, chest and ribs soften here. Inhaling, expanding from the root up. Exhaling, contracting the breath from the root. So the breath comes back from the root to be released. These three points at the belly, here at the base the ribs around the Manipur chakra, so the Muladhar chakra for the rooting element of earth, the Manipur chakra for the 
fire element at the solar plexus. And then it passes through the heart chakra and the throat chakra. So the breath travels along the length of your spine, passing through each of these chakra points. But we're particularly focusing on when it arrives at the root, when it passes through the muladhar. Danny, can you let Laura in, please? Thank you. Dirga pranayam, this three-part yogic breath, the three points we focus on are the root, the manipur, so the muladhar, the manipur, and the anahata. Belly, ribs, chest. root, solar plexus, heart. Inhaling and exhaling here. One more breath here. Inhaling, bring your hands together at your heart in Namaskar. Opening by chanting Om, the primordial sound of the universe, this roar of consciousness, Pranava, Pranava. Inhale fully. Om. So as you chant Om, Feel the vibration from your belly all the way up through to your heart, to your throat. Inhale to prepare. Oh. So notice how the all oh sound starts here at the belly and moves up towards the throat last time. Inhale fully. Oh. Hands to your eyebrow center. Namaste. Sashikal. Aslam alaikum. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, everyone. So really draw awareness today in our practice to what's happening in your foundations, all of the points of your body that connect with the earth element, with Prithvi. So in order to grow and in order to create space for change, we need to feel steady and stable from that starting point this place where we are in now. And having that firm footing in order to step forward will help us to step forward with more confidence, with more balance. And in that action, we need to be rooted in one place and then move with courage, with action into the next place. So have a purposeful, movement as well so ground and then purposefully rise or step forward those are the kind of um, energy that we want to be creating in our practice today let's start by doing a few spinal warm-ups hands on your knees inhale let's rotate over to the left circle to the right so big sufi circles here grounding down through your sit bone here so feeling the connection with your seat, your feet, your knees, your shins with the earth, the root of your sp spine, really grounded into your pelvis and then circulating and moving from that point up. Let's direct, reverse the direction. Let's bring up the spine. As we're doing this rotation, think about the effect. So we're working with the muladhar and we're working with the manipur. So here, as you rotate, feel this experience at the core. So you can really, you can even place your hand there to feel the movement in the, the central part of your torso. 
where the Manipur chakra is located. Coming to stillness, left fingertips on the earth, inhale, reach up and over with your right hand. You can bring your forearm onto the earth here or onto blocks or a footstool. Bring the earth up towards you. So this temptation here might be to lift your right sit bone. So ground down and really sink into that right hip and pelvis so that you're rooting it down into the earth while you're lifting and through the right arm. I'm coming into Prithvi Mudra here for the moment we're grounding. So let's ground here. You can gaze down towards the earth or out parallel to the horizon or up towards the sky. I prefer to keep my neck in a neutral position here. Three breaths here. Breathe into that right sit bone, that right hip, the right side of your pelvis, so that you can stay connected and rooted on that side. Inhale, let's move really slowly because we've been here for a while. Right hand comes to the earth, reach up and over. So you can start by being on your hand, spreading your fingers wide, connecting through the finger pads, the knuckles. And then you can bring your forearm to the earth. And then you'll notice as I did that, there was a slight lift in my hips and pelvis. So I'm gonna ground down through that side again. Actively encouraging the sit bone to connect with the earth, the hip to ground down, the pelvis to be really connected with the earth as much as possible. And this will help me extend even further through my side body. Blocks and footstools are really handy here to place your forearm or your hands on. Three more breaths here. And again, we're gonna rise with care because we've been here for a while. So let's move slowly. Bring both hands to the earth. Take a moment here in neutral. R lift through the crown. So now imagine that you have a, a golden thread or a beam of light that is connecting your root, your tailbone, that point that connects directly with the earth, traveling the length of your spine and coming out through the crown of your head, very center of your head. And as this golden thread or this beam of light, however you wish to visualize this, imagine that the light is moving. So the thread might be a shiny golden thread. So you can see the places where the light catches the gold. Perhaps there's sparkles or twinkles. Imagine these as molecules of light as molecules of energy, invigorating your spine as they float up and down. An image I often bring to mind is those, if anybody has a lava lamp and you have the lava lamp and then it, the lava lamp's got glitter or something inside it and you can see the movement of the bubbles or the glitter as the lamp warms up. Rooting to rise here with this light channel running through the center of you. One more breath here. Release your hands. As you exhale, turn over to the right. Left hand to the outside of the right knee. Right hand behind you. And notice how when you turn here, the place that you turn at is your torso. Breathe into the Manipur here. Breathe into the Muladhar. So as your breath passes through your body, as this channel of light passes through you, really focus on these two points at the root and at the solar plexus. 
One breath here. Inhale, turn through center over to the left side, right hand, left knee, left hand behind you. Gaze over. Breathe deeply here, inviting that Dirga Pranayam to activate both the Muladhan and the Manipur. Drawing upon foundational and transformational energies today. Our mantra for today is Om Krim Kalika Ye Namaha. We were working with this already. This Krim is the Bija for Kalima, the goddess of birth, sustenance and dissolution. So creation, sustenance and dissolution, birth, death and regeneration. Inhale back to center, take a moment here just to allow your body to equalize and come back into balance. Let's draw out our block or whatever we were seating on, had we been seated on something. Extend the left leg long. In fact, you can still have your folded blanket if you want underneath your seat here. Tuck in the right, I've got this way, so this be tuck in the right foot. So use your hands on either side of your hips to lengthen here with the spine. So you can see I've got quite long arms compared to my torso. Turn your heart over towards the left leg. Flex your toes. Hug in all of the muscles to your bones. So have this sense of activation running through this right leg. Ground down through this right leg. Lengthen. And as you exhale, we're going to hinge over towards that right foot. Our hands will land somewhere along the length of our leg or the earth, or we may reach for that right foot and connect with that foot. You can also use your belt or a tie or something to help you. Inhale, lengthen. Perhaps you reach up with your arms. This often helps to create that hinge effect from the hips and pelvis. Exhale, hinge forward. And then release your hands to wherever they rest. So it might be on your thighs, just below your knees, your ankles, your feet, toes. So have the sensation that you're hinging from the hips and pelvis. Broaden across your shoulder blades, your shoulder collarbones rather. Draw the shoulder blades towards each other. And then when you've created this folding action, you can then soften through your head and your heart and your shoulders. Janushi Sasana. Check what's happening with that left knee. If you find that you're locking it out and it is placing too much tension in your hamstrings, soften that knee. Sometimes placing a folded blanket or rolled up blanket underneath that knee will help. Ground, now check all the points that are connected with the, uh, the sit bones. The length of that left leg, the heel, of that left foot. The right seat, the right thigh, the right shin, the right foot. So you're creating this foundation, this action of folding over activates the core the, at which the Manipur chakra is located around the solar plexus. So let's visualize the color red underneath our seat. And then the color yellow. So between our abdomen and the legs. Color so yellow at us. Remaining between is the Swadhisthan chakra. In between is the Swadhisthan chakra. And the Swadhisthan chakra is orange. 
So you can see where these three chakras, these three chakras work together. One more breath here, release your foot or your leg. Inhale, lengthen up, take a moment here. Now, keeping that left leg extended, lengthen, and we're gonna turn our torso over to the left. Take the left hand behind you. This right hand goes onto the outside of your left leg. You also have the option here of lifting your left leg and holding the outside of your leg. Anywhere along your leg, you can use your belt. You can take your right hand to the out, little toe side of your left leg so that you lift up this leg. So this is a twist here, a variation of Ardha Matsyandrasan, seated twist variation. So your leg, that left leg can be on the earth with the right hand on the outside of that leg. You can have that leg lifted. Three breaths here. So lots of options about what that left leg is doing and what this right, where this right hand is. Inhale, counter twist to the right. Extend this right leg long, fold in the left. And we're going to do the same on this side, Janushirsasan. And then a variation of Ardha Matsyandrasan. Lengthen here. Turn your heart over towards your right leg. Flex that right foot. Ground down through the lower body. Sit as if you are being held by the earth. Lengthen this golden channel, this beam of light running through the center of you. As you exhale, hinge over the right leg. And again, reach towards that foot and then release your hands. Broaden across your collarbones. Draw your shoulder blades together, perhaps to add that length. Hug in the midline. So hug into this kind of midline through your center. This will help to keep you balanced over this right leg rather than turning you over to, because we're going to come to center, but we will turn over towards the right side. And then when you've hinged as far forward as you'd like to go, you can soften your head, your shoulders. Again, remember to check what's happening with that right knee if we're locking it out. So we want to contract in, draw in our muscles towards the bones. We want to draw in our energy towards the Manipur chakra. So we want to feel engaged in order to transform. We have to engage with the solidity, the security, the stability that is offered by our home, by our body. So that we feel sure of ourselves, we feel sure in ourselves, we have that sense of inner confidence. And being secure physically, being safe physically, being secure in our body, being secure in the place that we call our home, that part of the earth we call home. One more breath here in Janushirsas and then release your hands, walk them back towards you, rise up, counter twist over to the right now. So right hand behind you, left hand can go to the outside of your right leg. You can see this gives you a little bit of resistance in order to turn at the torso. Option here, take the right hand to the outside of the left hand to the outside of the right leg. You can hold the leg. Remember that right leg can stay on the earth. One more breath. Inhale, turn through center, counter twist to the left. 
take a moment here. Release your hands. Let's fold in the right leg. Come directly onto our knees. We're going into Virasana, hero's pose. Again, remember you can pad your knees, pad the back of your knees. ankles with your blankets let's come into manipur a manipur chakra variation so bring the fingertips together and then cross the thumbs and place the right thumb on top of the left thumb so that you have a triangle here so you can see you have a triangle there and then bring your hands your thumbs in front to connect with your manipur chakra so you can see it looks like an arrow if you were to look down take a moment here ground down through the lower body inhale reach overhead and rise up onto your knees exhale fold forward in balasana take a moment and then we're going to slide up into table cat cow three times and then come back into Varasana, come into your uh, Manipur Mudra here again at the heart, at the, man, at the solar plexus rather, sorry. And then inhale to rise up. And we'll do this cycle three times. Exhale, Balasana. This is a variation of earth salutation. And then cat cow. Really focus what's happening with the root here and around your solar plexus three times back into virasana or mudra manipur mudra take a breath here inhale to rise up exhale balasana inhale table and then cat cow and i'm keeping my knees together here as i move and then back into Varasana, hands again in Romanipur Mudra here. We're going to do Kapalabhati breath. Kapalabhati breath is that breath of fire. So now, as you can see, we're going to shift the energy a little bit, move from the grounding, um, stabilizing foundation of the root chakra, move into this more um, kind of fiery energy of the Mudra uh, Manipur. Kapalabhati breath is shining skull breath. So it's an active exhale and a passive inhale. If you are in your moon cycle or you are pregnant or you have a migraine or a headache today, stay with long, deep breathing, Dirga Pranayam, for example, um, because it's very forceful, this breath. So as you exhale, remember we always draw in the up the navel for the exhale. So we'll pump the navel back and then the, um, we're almost as if we expel the air in one burst. You can keep your mudra here. So I'll sort of stay here so you can see the actions of my abdomen. Take a normal breath in, so rhythmic breath in. As you exhale, draw the belly back and then release the air through the nose. So you'll see my belly going. The breath is coming out through my nose. It's a forceful, active breath. So I'll come into my Manipur chakra here. Manipur mudra here. Inhale. Kapalabhati together. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale the breath out completely. Tuck in the chin. Engage your mula band, your root lock, your udiyana band here at the core. Throat lock at the jalanda band. This is mahabanda. Holding the breath out. Take a moment. As long as you can keep the breath out. Then. 
Lift your chin, release your throat lock, Jalandar Band. Inhale fully. Re engage the throat lock, Jalandar Band, by tucking the chin into the throat, holding the breath in. Your Mula Band, Udhyana Band, and Jalandar Band are all engaged. These are locks of energy. So remember when we were thinking about this beam of light, this channel of light, or this golden thread running through you. Here, we're basically creating three knots to contain the energy, to concentrate the pran, really concentrate the life, vital life force. When you're ready, release the throat lock. Take a breath out, release that breath. Take a normal, routine, rhythmic breath that is natural to you. Nothing forced, just your routine, usual breath. And then let's release the hands, bring them onto the earth, tuck the toes, take the feet slightly wide, coming into mounting part of the tuss and pedal your feet. Now let's really begin to engage with this transformative energy that we've moved up as if we were moving up the locks of the canal. Pedal your feet, ground down through your finger pads, claw your hands into the earth as if you're a tiger ready to pounce full of energy that is um, contained here before you release it. Tiger claws for your hands. Reach down towards the earth through the heels. Reach up with the tailbone, the root towards the sky. Parvatasan. Take a moment here and then bend into your right knee. Release those right toes and reach back along behind you with those right toes. As you exhale, bend into the knee and bring it in towards your nose, towards the heart, and then extend behind you again. This time, bend into your knee and let's take it across the body over to the left elbow. Now, if it feels very challenging, you can always bring that left knee to the earth and do this from table. Right leg reaches up. Bend into the right knee, over to the right elbow. And then reaching behind you again. We're going to step that right foot all the way forward between our hands. Drop the right heel. Take a moment here. And then inhale to rise in warrior one. Bring this mudra to your um, navel, the Manipur Mudra, creating this sort of triangle shape here. Bend into your right knee. When you're ready, we're going to lift our arms overhead. So now check your foundations here because we've been working to create this foundational energy to so connect through the four corners of both feet. Press through the big toe pad the inside of that heel, the little toe pad and the outside of that heel on both feet. And it's going to feel different on that rear leg because of the angle that we're at, we're at a 45 degree angle there. So check how your weight is distributed on that foot. Hug in towards the midline. So squeeze those muscles towards the bones, hugging them in. Engage with your mula band here. So squeeze the pelvis. Engage with udhyana band by knitting the ribs in together towards the midline. One more breath here in warrior one. As you exhale, open out in warrior two. So here you can have your hands. I'm keeping all of my fingers together. So this connects all of the five elements. So just for balance. Maybe you sink even lower into the earth, root through the lower body, rise up through the upper body. Use this channel of light, this beam of light running through the center of you to help you connect with your muladhar, 
your manipur. Thinking about and always thinking about the other chakras, although we're not focusing on them, remember they're there. The, the anahat, the vishud, the agnya, the sahasara. One breath here. We're going to move into pyramid pose from here. So straighten through that right leg. Draw your hands back towards the center. Now, you might have quite a wide stance here, so you might need to shuffle that right foot slightly forward. Checking your pyramid pose here. So if your legs are very narrow together towards the middle of your mat, you might want to take your right foot slightly further out so that you have a broader base for your pyramid. Turn your hips over your right leg. Have a soft bend in that knee so it's not locked out. Hands in your Manipur chakra here. Manipur Mudra. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips and pelvis. Keep your collarbones broad here. Sternum long, crown is reaching forward. So that you're hinging over the right leg. Bend more deeply into that right knee if you find that your hamstrings are getting very tight here. Have blocks available if you have them nearby your footstool so that you're ready to reach down towards the earth. Release your hands down towards the earth here. And again, you might feel that you need to adjust your stance. So hop that left leg that's behind you so that it feels comfortable here. Purvottanasana, pyramid pose. It's also called intense side stretch here. So you can have hands on blocks here, hands on the earth. Remember, we can bring the earth up towards us. Fold it over this right leg. So again, think about what we're trying to connect with. We're grounding down this movement into the earth. And then this lift from the earth to pass through the core, the Manipur chakra. And here, as we're folded over here, we're stimulating that core. We're going to move into revolved trikonasana, revolved triangle. Parivritta trikonasana. So this left hand, you can leave it where it is. Or you can begin to move it over towards the right leg. You may even cross it to the other side of your right foot. And remember, you can have a block here. So maybe if I turn around and you can see me a little bit better. So you can bring this left hand over onto the earth, closer to the right foot and all over the right foot. And remember, you can place it on blocks. Your right fingertips can come to your right hip here. And then begin to open up this right shoulder. Check how your alignment in your legs is feeling. Do you need to take your legs slightly further apart? Because remember, the further apart your legs are, the broader your pyramid base. That will help you here to balance in this revolt trikonasana. So open across your heart, deep twist here at the torso. Ground down through your feet. Hug in your muscles of your legs to the bone. Right hand can stay on your hips, or you can begin to reach up towards the sky with your right hand. So be where you wish to be here. Use the props by raising the earth up towards you. Support yourself. One more breath here in Paravita Trikonasan. Your mantra. <laughs> Turn to your mantra. Turn to Kali here. Om Krim Kali. 
When you're ready, let's bring that right hand back down to our right hip, then back to the earth, moving back, bend into your right knee deeply. Come onto the ball of your left foot here. So bend into your right knee, come onto the ball of your left foot. We're gonna rise up in Anjali. Come to your mudra at your heart. Take a moment here. Inhale, reach overhead with your hands. So remember, this is different to warrior one. Warrior one is when the heel is on the earth. And then high lunge, or Anjali here, is when we're on the ball of our foot. Ball of our um, the rear leg. Exhale, hands to your heart now. We're going to come into a twist here. So moving again with care. Left hand can go to the outside of the right knee. And you can bring this right arm behind you. Balance here. You can slide this left hand closer to the earth and reach up with your right arm so that your left hand is on the outside of your right foot coming into this revolved Parshava Kanasana. That right arm can be reaching back, can be reaching up, depends on how your right shoulder feels. Remember, you can have that right hand on that right knee instead. When you're ready, let's turn back to center. We're going to bring our hands to the earth. Step back with that right leg. One oh, pedal here. That right leg's been working hard for some time now. So pedal it out here in Parvatasana, in this moving mountain. And if you wish, actually, let's all come down to the earth for Balasana, just for a rest for a moment before we move to the other side. I invite you to bring your hands to the back of your head, elbows on the earth for your Balasana, or you can take your arms alongside your body. Reground here. Let's take this opportunity to reground. Find our foundation again. So you can see that when we're in a place where we're working with the root chakra, the muladhar, we're really grounding into our foundation. It's very supportive. And as we um, activate the energy and begin to direct and um, contain the plan purposefully so that we can use that energy for transformation of whatever it is we wish to change or transform. It becomes more challenging. We then begin to realize what a hard journey we're embarking on, what a difficult journey we might be embarking on, because, you know, we have to work in life. Very, you know, very rarely do things come to us easily. We have to create the environment for that. We have to create the change in order to invite in fresh energy. So when we feel like we need to withdraw and reground and recenter and find our foundation again, it can give us an opportunity to be ready to expand once more. From Charles Pose, your variation of the Lassana. Let's come back into mountains. And let's reach behind that left leg this time. Remember, you can be in table here. We're going to bring that um, left knee to the heart. So you can do that by being in table. Bend into that knee and bring it in towards the nose. We extend that left leg. This time, let's cross that left knee over to the right elbow. Re-extend that leg. Bend in over to the left elbow. Re-extend. This time as we bring it forward, we're going to step forward with that left foot, drop the right heel and come immediately into warrior one. Virabhadrasana one. 
you can come into your Manipur chakra. So remember Manipur Mudra. You're calling it the Manipur chakra today. Um, because it's a variation, so I keep... We're bringing the fingertips together and we're going to cross the right thumb over the left thumb so we create this triangle. Remember the Manipur, the reason we're creating this triangle is Manipur, um, the yantra or the shape of the Manipur, Manipura is a downward pointing triangle. So let's take a moment here to really ground down through our feet. Remember, the Pada Hasta, the Pada Banda, sorry. Pada, Pada Banda is the lock of the feet. So grounding down through all four corners of your feet, hugging in the muscles to the bones, really connecting with this channel of light that travels from the root up through the crown. Noticing the energy around the Muladhar, the Manipur. One breath here, you can reach up with your arms. When you're ready, let's open out into Mahavira Bhadras and the Great Warrior. I'm going to turn around so I can see you. And I've got my fingers together. You know, we can often adopt different mudras. But today I want to bring all of the five elements into harmony here. Because this is a transition point for us. Ground down through the earth. Rise up. So we're rooting to find our foundations, rising up towards transformation. From here, we're going to move into our pyramid pose, Purvottanasana. So let's check the legs. Where do we want our legs? So you might need to step forward with that right leg slightly. Have a soft bend in that knee, maybe. Bring your hands into your mudra at the Manipur. And then begin to hinge. So as you do this, push the weight of your hips and pelvis back. Lengthen across the front body here. So spread your collarbones. Lengthen the sternum. Check what's happening with that left knee so it doesn't um, lock there. And begin to hinge forward. Keeping your spine long here. Crown reaching forward, tailbone reaching back halfway. And then when we're ready, we're going to release our hands down towards the earth. Have your blocks ready or your low footstool. And as you do that, you may find that your stance isn't quite as comfortable as you'd like it. So you can hop your right leg in a little bit closer. You can take it wider on your mat. You can bring it in more alignment with your left foot. Pyramid pose, Purvottanasana. Fold over this left leg. Check what's happening with this left hamstring, particularly um, if you have short hamstrings like I do from different sports. Avoid locking out this left knee. And we're transitioning into Parivritta Trikonasan, Revolve Triangle. Move this right hand over towards the left foot. You can still keep it on the big toe side, or you can cross the right hand over onto the little toe side of your right foot. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Open out this left shoulder. So you might take your left hand to help you open out that left shoulder. You can see that I'm high on my fingertips. So this all depends on where you are. So remember, the way that we reach the earth will vary depending on our different body shapes, the proportionality of our limbs. 
that left hand can stay on your left hip or you can begin to reach it up. In revolved triangle, Parivrita Trikonasana, you can keep your gaze neutral so that your neck is neutral. You might find that if you turn your gaze down or up, it, it brings a different sensation to you, one that you may not enjoy one that you may find helpful. So you might lift your gaze up towards the side here. Remember where we're working today. We're working today on the Manipur chakra and the root chakra. So we're grounding into our foundations and then rising up into transformation. So thinking about where we're concentrating the flow of prana and energy. One more breath here. Let's gaze down towards the earth and bring that left arm down towards the earth. Take your right hand over the left foot again. And from here, we're going to move into high lunge. So you might want to move that right foot back slightly, come onto the ball of that foot, bend into your left knee. And then when you're balanced here and connected with the earth, rise up. High lunge, hands in your chakra mudra at your Manipur chakra. Inhale, reach overhead. So from here, remember to grab, hug everything into the midline, hug the muscles in. We're going to come into a twist here. Parivrita Pashavo Kanasana. So your options are to take your right hand to that left outside of your left knee and reach back here. Your other option is to slide your right hand down towards the earth. Then you can reach up with your left arm or you can reach behind. See where your arm feels comfortable here. Remember that right hand can be on the earth, can be on a block. Ground down through your feet, especially that left foot. Press all of your five toes of the rear leg, the rear foot into the earth. So you feel that connection there. Pull, release the energy out through that left heel, right heel rather. One more breath. Exhale, release the left hand to the earth. Frame your left foot and let's step back into mountain. Pedal your feet. And we're gonna come down to the earth, onto our knees. And come into Virasana, take a moment here before you. Come all the way down to the earth. So here, your option, yogis. What do you need in this moment? Do you need more grounding? Or are you happy to stay with this transformative energy? So let's think about what you need. Yeah. So it might be that you've come into your Manipur Chakra, Manipur Mudra. It might be you come into your Prithvi um, mudra with your thumb on your little finger and hands on your knees. You decide where you want to be. Let's take a couple of breaths here. We'll chant a mantra before we come down to the earth. Om Krim Kalika Yena Maha, invoking the energy of Kalima, the creation from that rooting into the earth that sustenance, that maintaining of that foundation, and then this constructive dissolution, which is that power of transformation. So imagine the phoenix rising. This is the energy represented by Kalima. Ma. Om Krim Kalika Ye Namaha. 
Om Krim Kalikaye Namaha Om Krim Kalikaye Namaha Release your hands. Let's come on to the earth. We're going to move into bridge pose before coming into a happy baby. So come to lie on your back. Bring your heels up towards your fingertips. Now here, let's ground down through our feet. So lift the four corners of your feet and place them on the earth and connect through the feet. Connect here through the pelvis and the hips and the sacrum. Then you'll have a little curve in your middle back here. And then connect through your shoulders, your upper back, your forearms, perhaps your hands, the back of your head. As you begin to inhale, begin to press through all four corners of your feet and you'll notice a slight lift of your hips and pelvis. Continue that rising sensation with the hips and pelvis. Imagine that you are hugging a block between your thighs. Hands can stay on the earth or you can bend into your forearms to help create a scaffold here. And allow this movement to cascade from the root the money pool here. So here really where we are, we've got the root hugged in here, Mula Bandhi gauge, the Udhyana Bandhi gauge, so squeezing into the midline here. Chin is tucked ever so slightly so that the back of the neck feels long here. You can take your hands underneath you and come into your, I've come here into my money pool mudra, so I've got my fingertips together, my right thumb crossed over my left thumb. Or you can engage all of your hands by, in, um, by interlacing your fingers. Really connecting with what it is you might want to change or transform. It could be something small or something significant. For me, I simply wanted to change the flow of my energy, just to activate my energy a little bit more so that I have, I can give myself a little kickstart for all of the things that I have planned over the next few days. When you're ready, let's release our hands, lower down, and then. As you, um, as you lower to the ground, notice the connection between your shoulder blades and the earth. And then when your sacrum lands on the earth, gently with your hips and pelvis and your feet again, take a moment here. And then let's bend into the left knee. Take that left hand to the outside of the left foot or the back of the thigh. Bend into the right knee. Again, you can take that right hand to the back of the right thigh or to the outside of the right foot coming into happy baby, Ananda Balasana. So really connect here with your sacrum and the earth through that root. One more breath. And then let's release the feet. Yogi's choice here. You can stay in Shavasana or you can roll onto your side or if you really wish to, you can roll along your spine a few times before coming up to your seat. So yogis, you be where you are with what you need in this moment. Our time here is almost over, but you have time ahead in your day. Let's bring your hands together at the heart. Inhale fully, closing by chanting Om Shanti three times. 
Om Shanti 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 Om Krim Kalika Ye Namaha to you all. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.